Alright, so for this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at using Luminar AI to enhance your real estate photos. I personally only use this for my exterior photos, and I don't use it for every single exterior photo, but if I need to do sky swaps, sky replacements, twilights, that type of thing, I definitely use it. And there's a lot of things that you can do within it, and I want to take you in there right now and show you how it works. All right, so this is just a demo. This is what I'm gonna, um, the image that we are gonna turn into a twilight image. I'm gonna go overboard. I'm gonna show you pretty much every feature that I like to use, as well as some of the other features that you can use for, like say, doing headshots and skin retouching and that type of thing. It's just amazing for that. Uh, that's actually the reason why I bought this software and then found out that doing sky replacement is in this software was super duper simple. So once you actually purchase the software, and it's going to uh, put it in as a plugin right into Lightroom for you. So all you gotta do is select your image and right click, just like as if we were gonna bring a layer into Photoshop, we can do edit in Luminar AI right there. And then of course, if you've done any adjustments, it'll ask you if you wanna bring those adjustments into Luminar AI for you, and I say yes. All right, so once it is loaded into Luminar AI, this is the uh, platform, if you're not familiar with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to make this image look like we shot it at twilight, at dusk, and we're going to do some other fun things with this image just to play around, and I'll show you the capabilities of this software. It's pretty cool. So all you have to do is come up here to the edit, and it's going to bring all your tools up. I don't know exactly what each one of these sliders is doing, like to describe what it's doing, but here's accent. I mean, you can kind of see what it's doing. It's bumping the contrast, bumping the sharpness a little bit. It's kind of like a dehaze slider, but I like to put, you know, you know, subtleness is key with anything with, you know, photo editing, in my opinion. Uh, so right about there looks good. And you always have this little toggle button right here that we can turn that on and off just to kind of see the changes that you did and sky enhancer is another good one I don't really use that a whole lot we're gonna be replacing the sky completely in this image anyway here's a good one composition you can resize the image I usually wait and do this in Lightroom though and but you also have your uh, horizontal and vertical adjustments right here uh, see how well that did and you can also um, once you start turning it, just like in Lightroom and Photoshop, you have your grid lines to match up your horizontal and verticals. Uh, so let's see, right about there looks good. Then we can just close that out, and then it does its analyzing and fixes it for you. Light right here, this is where you're going to adjust your white balance. And again, all this stuff, I really don't mess with it in uh, typically. But we are going to warm up this image a little bit, because remember, we're doing a dusk twilight image so the uh, you remember the white balance is always going to be a little bit warmer with those images if you've ever shot a true sunset image structure is good this actually is what I use for skin tones in uh, when I do headshots but look at how it's softening the grass which you don't want and of course if you go the other direction it like over sharpens it it's like a clarity slider really but for landscapes I don't mess with it and the boost is just like it adds an extra boost to it I guess but color is a good one it can bump up our vibrance a little bit and I love the way it just it does control the vibrance it just it does a really nice job that's one thing I've I've learned so the HSL is your hue saturation and luminance sliders just like we have in Lightroom uh, I think I'm going to leave that alone for now we can always come back to it uh, black and white if you want to switch that over um, you have your details that's your sharpness basically denoise landscape this is what I'm going to do golden hour although that's overkill so we can just add a touch of golden hour light to that just look at that it looks like it it warms it up and boosts like the highlights just to make it look like it's getting lit by the sun. I definitely recommend using the golden hour slider for your twilights. You can even do foliage enhancer. If I go way too far, you can see it. But adding just a touch of that could help. What's the advanced sliders? Ah, yeah, we can change the hue of that foliage a little bit. I kind of like that. 
vignette. I don't put vignettes on them. Okay, and here's where the magic happens: is in the skies. So, sky selection. And you know, and I don't like to go overkill or drastic. We could put something like this in and just make it look super fake. But I like something subtle that doesn't look like it's super fake. And I really do like this one actually because if you were shooting with the sun behind you, this is actually really what. You know, if there were clouds in the sky, you could tell that they're kind of being lit by the sun. And this particular image looks like, due to the shadows, that the sun is coming from, uh, well, here's the shadow of the tree, so it's coming from over this direction to the left. So, this is actually kind of close to what we would actually have if we were shooting this house at twilight. So, I like to try to ma not make it as, you know, super fake <laughs> as possible, you know, realistic as possible. Um, so sky uh, orientation, you can do, you can move it up or down, but you can see right here where the line is on it. So we need to make sure that it's below the horizon like that, but somewhere like that, and then you can shift it back and forth. That way, if you're doing a bunch of different images and you're shooting around the house, they all don't look the same. So I, I recommend maybe moving, adjusting your at least your horizontal image because you know the sky sh this clouds move so you want to make sure you're not leaving the clouds in all in one place for every single image and mask refinement that's why I take the global slider and go all the way up if you notice it just crisps the edges right along with those where those tree lines are and I usually take the close the gaps and the fix the details somewhere in the middle right there so and that just adds another extra. Um, it just fine tunes the mask that it does for you. So it's pretty amazing how quick and easy that fixes that for you. Uh, scenery lighting. I don't really mess with any of these. Reflection's a good one. If you want, if you were shooting over water or something, it'll add more reflection, make it more realistic. You can do. Uh, so we can add warmth to that sky if we need to, just a little bit. And if you go to the other way, see how blue that looks. But I think maybe warming it up just a little bit more would help. And augmented sky, this is kind of fun. Let's see. Where did it go? Here we go. We can just pick an object. And let's see. We can put mountains in the background. Uh, you can do light. Put the the moon in there that would look cool but for this one actually I'm gonna use these birds right here and then once you select it it's gonna put the birds in there and then you can just close up this window uh, and then click on place object and that's gonna allow you to shift these so let's say uh, let's say I have these birds flying over this right by these trees maybe tuck it in somewhere like that I like that and then just click on the window here to close it to get rid of that box and let's come down here and see what else we can do here mm, let's see right here portrait bokeh face this is a good one um, if you're doing portraits you can brighten up just the face of your subjects which is really good the skin slider I do use that really helps to soften skin tones it like does like a frequency separation if you're familiar with doing that in Photoshop for skin retouching it does this like with just a click of a slider it's pretty awesome but let's keep moving on the super contrast I really don't mess with this too much I mean you can play with it a little bit um, if you toggle that on and off I mean it's very it can it can start to look super fake it, the contrast sliders do push it you know quite a bit the more you go so I don't really mess with that at all but if you can take your slider down here let's just do a before that's what it looked like before and then after make sure to hit that subscribe button because I'm releasing tutorials all the time but thanks for sticking around we'll see you in the next video guys bye bye